we go. Ending right. bad, normal, game clear one, saves 53. Continues. Eight there. hours, walking distance, running. We ran. We ran. Oh, lot. we ran. We got 169 out of 204 item pickups. That's not too bad. We defeated 103 enemies with our stick. <laughs> we uh, shot 42 of them. Our shooting style was uh, mostly mid range. Yeah. Our mid-range. rank, some stars. <laughs> Is that out of is some that, stars? I guess that's stars out of stars. We got three, three out, out of seven, seven stars because seven that's a good a good thing. Makes sense. Yeah. Are those three are the items we see there, are those three items we didn't get? Or is that items we now get on a second playthrough? What should we should, let's, should we click? <laughs> yes. Oh, it's sure. okay to save. New, yeah, theme park gone. The next fear. <laughs> so the, I guess the idea being, oh yeah, you finished it on the bad end then. Now you can play it through with a chainsaw. Yeah. And see how it goes and try and get that good ending. <laughs> good luck! You're gonna need it! Because I think, but that's one of the nice things about games in this vintage though, is they wanted you to play it more. Yeah, and they made it interesting. There was reasons to go back. It's like with the Resident Evil games, were all about yeah, two different, different playthroughs and stuff. So yeah, I don't know. It's definitely a very interesting game. Yeah, do you think it was worth playing? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a one to work that's worth experiencing. Yeah. But so it's also one of the. <laughs> I guess depending on the type of experience you want, part of me would feel like just you should be okay with using a guide from time to time. Yeah. Unless you want the game to make you feel like you're going insane, which might be part of the fire effort. Yeah. I, we did a good job of not guiding. Yeah. Like that, but that wasn't easy. I mean, I don't know how this edit is going to end up, but like there was a couple of 45 minute walls. Yeah, that we experienced whilst we were playing this game, where we were just trying to figure out these fucking puzzles that had the answers in front of our face. Yeah, no. Yeah, but then didn't quite, yeah, and come together. I mean, I don't remember seeing Alessia like that in the game. That's it. it was in the church. Okay. There was a scene, but we were kind of lo- like. I don't even remember that. <laughs> that's from the intro that I think we skipped. Did we accidentally skip? Yeah, we accidentally I skipped the intro. We give, I suppose we don't. I don't remember being given an intro. No, there definitely Even is one. Skip. Okay. Um. But yeah, so that is the bad Silent Hill. So for the good Silent Hill ending, what you need to do is in the hospital there is some goo on the floor. Do you remember the goo on the floor? Vaguely. Yeah, there's a bottle in the kitchen that we didn't pick up. Okay. Yeah, and you put the goo in the bottle, and then you can throw that at uh, Sybil when you're in that boss fight. Also, Dr. Kaufman's chain, we got part way through before getting bored and running to the end. But inside of that safe is a glass vial, which you need to give back to Kaufman. Okay. And if you do both of those things, you'll get the best the best ending. If you just save Kaufman, though, you get the uh, the kind of the the kind of I guess the canonical ending, which is the setup for Silent Hill Three. Okay, interesting. Or well, if you just save Cyril. No, if you just save Kaufman, Kaufman's the important. No, but what happens if you just save Cyril? Nothing. I don't know. Right. I don't know. I've never done it that way around. But um, but that but yeah but that and then that links into Silent Hill three because to be honest, Silent Hill two is the best one, mm. I think. Like that game's, I mean that that game's like gets the praise and like laudedness that it does for a reason because it's like it kind of really doubles down on kind of being about fear and about yeah. a particular person's particular fear. And like, because like this is quite general, mm. and I think as the series goes on, especially with two and three, they become much more personal. Interpret like Silent Hill becomes a much more personal 
interpretation of the torment of the protagonists. Yeah. You yeah, know? So there's one thing with Silent Hill that I, just from watching the film, I think I got this vibe, but it's never explicitly said, <laughs> it was this idea that Silent Hill itself is pretty much limbo and you keep going out of limbo and hell. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure hell is involved on some level. Yeah. But it's just so this idea that, like, you were always dead, essentially. Yeah. Well, that... Like that's The car crash did kill you, and then, but you died in Silent Hill, so yeah. now you're in limbo dealing with yeah, but that. See, that's the thing, is with this... With, like with the canonical ending of this, mm. that isn't what happens. Okay. What happens is the fight goes down. Um, there's an extra cutscene mm. where Kaufman comes in. Then there's a bigger bargy bargy with that. <laughs> um, but it ends up with there being a baby, and Harry takes the baby. And takes the baby, and then the baby is and the baby is Hellspawn potentially Hellspawn. Hell spawn. Yeah. Nice. The de- the devil. Yeah. The devil incarnate. Thus creating an interesting setup for Silent Hill 3. So Pyramid Head was an introduction of two then? Yes. Okay. Because he's obviously one of the most iconic things yeah. about Silent Hill. Yeah. Well, you know, like he but he really only exi- like he really only exists in two. He's not in three. Yeah. Because okay. he's particular to James the main character James's nightmare about Pyramid Heads and yeah well because Pyramid Head I'm going on a fucking tangent now (laughs) but Pyramid Head is James oh okay like he is the manifestation of the terrible thing (laughs) that exists in that game that I don't want to spoil for people who are playing it okay but yeah like but uh, he's meant I think he's meant to be the manifestation of the shadow of that okay but which is why he's always following you and everywhere and you can never get away from him yeah yeah and I, which is really interesting and, si- and that's the thing is Silent Hill 2 deserves coverage of that caliber yeah and Silent Hill 1 I th- I think is a brilliant start yeah to a series that lost its way <laughs> Like cons- yeah, look considerably after the PlayStation Two generation. Like, uh, like I'd, I, I don't know. I've always wanted to play um, Silent Hill. Is it Downpour That's or fine. Shattered Memories? That's another one. I think Shattered Memories is the one that I would like to play. That's the one okay. that has you doing th- like therapy at the same time as you're playing the game. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I would like, yeah, I'd really like to play that one. And maybe that's something that we can do on this show another time. Okay. It's on the Wii. Okay. All right, sweet. To... Well, Alan, thank you for joining me for <laughs> playing this... a whole bunch of Silent Hill. Hell adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we'll tune in next time when we pick another game. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks for watching our video. If you want to see more stuff, you can click on these two videos or maybe like hit the bell for a subscription notification, leave a comment, all of that good stuff. Or you can visit us on our website, tastemygameface.com. Thank you.